Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and welcome to day five of my seven day, one sketch a day challenge. Um, today I'm going to be sketching this sailing boat using this reference photograph from Pixabay, um, just to try and get the movement and the life and just keeping it really, really simple in my very small A6 sketchbook, details of which you'll find in the description below. It's um, mixed media paper or cartridge paper. It isn't watercolour paper, so I have to be really careful when I paint that I don't sort of overwork it uh, because I won't get washes um, and lovely effects happening in the same way on this paper as I do on watercolour paper. So, as always, the first thing I'm going to do is begin to very loosely sketch out the scene in pencil, simplifying it. Um, I've got a border of washi tape, which is a low-tack craft tape, um, just stuck onto the edges of my sketchbook, and that will help my sketch to look quite nice at the end with its clean white border. So I'm just getting in the horizon line and then working on the simplest lines just for the shape of the hull at a slight angle um, in the water with the front or the bow just sort of... Um, popping up a little bit higher than the horizon line and then getting in the angle of this large sail which is only partially in the frame. So trying to get the angle right, keeping the lines really, really simple. If I can get the pencil sketch right, then the paint should be fairly straightforward to put on. So as you can see, it's filling the whole frame. And when I put the sky in, when I paint it, I shall paint around the sail and then just put a bit of detail into the sail later and probably use a fine liner at the end just to finish the sketch off. So I'm using um, just an ordinary um, HB pencil here. Um, I want something um, that doesn't indent the paper too much, so I don't want to use a hard pencil, but neither do I want to use a soft pencil that's going to be a bit too smudgy. So an HB or a B pencil is going to be really good. It um, can still get in some sort of um, nice varied weights of line. You can see I'm building up some slightly darker lines underneath the mast where there's a bit of shadow and keeping it nice and light and fresh where I want my rigging and um, sort of the, the sort of marks and lines that just sort of help to describe the shape of the billowing sail. I'm going to have a couple of people on deck but I'm only going to have them suggested and likewise with the cabin of the yacht there's going to be very little of that showing. Um, the yacht's moving, so I want to just keep everything really fresh and just suggest details like that so it doesn't look too static. And it's just going to get sort of just the rough lines of the rigging in. It's not important to have too much in, but just enough um, to keep the illusion of this yacht fairly convincing. And I put in a few little marks just in case I want to put in some distant yachts in the distance, but I may leave those out, keeping it simple. Now using my three quarter inch flat brush, I'm wetting the page all the way around the sail. I'm going to go under the sail and across the water as well, uh, but keeping the sail dry so I can get a nice hard edged outline where the sky and the sail meet. And my blue colour today for my sky is going to be nice and fresh, cobalt blue mixed with a bit of um, cerulean blue. Just covering the sky area, not worried about it looking a bit patchy, it's just a, it's just a sketch and remember this isn't watercolour paper so it's going to look a bit patchy. But just putting in that paint, letting it flow. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, as it usually is, and it has been for all of these sketches. Not sure whether I've uh, remembered to tell you that, but you can paint flat, of course, if you prefer, or just at a slight angle. This is just the angle that I'm used to painting at. 
So sweeping across some tone across the water, but leaving some unpainted paper or paler areas where we can get those like wave crests where the yacht is sort of racing through. And then I've added some indigo to my blue mixture to really darken it down and get those deep shadow colours underneath the hull of the yacht. Um, and sort of leaving still some of those white patches and the blue water um, going to soften back with a small squirrel mop and use a bit of tissue as well just to um, kind of soften back areas so we get some soft edges around the boat to look like sea spray. And then back in with my darker colour, just building up a little bit of that um, depth of tonal value and with this basic layer finished, it's time to let it dry completely. Now it's dry, I'm just going to just, just touch the sky lightly and yeah, it's definitely dry. Um, now I'm going to put a bit of shadow and shape, hopefully, and form into the sail. So I've mixed up a mid value um, indigo with a little bit of the cobalt and cerulean mixture into it. Um, to mix up quite a transparent um, colour to get some shadow into the front of the sail here. And I'm going to soften with my um, damp, clean squirrel mop to soften that blue into the sail for a really soft edge that just disappears into the white and that hard edge where the sail meets the sky. I need it a little bit darker, so going in using um, my size 14 Escoda Perla synthetic round brush just to get the paint in and then going back and sort of um, squeezing out all the water from the brush and softening it back again but keeping it nice and dark at the base. And being guided by the reference photograph, um, doing exactly the same, getting some dark into the front of the boat, leaving um, the left side unpainted and then putting the shadow across the right side and just leaving it, peter, letting it peter out where we meet where the waves are being pushed up by the boat. And now just some something and nothing with some burnt umber and the tip of the brush just to get in um, like the cabin, suggestions of things on deck, that kind of stuff. Um, and then putting in sort of this dark edge to this um, large flapping sail, being guided by the photograph. And then I'll start to get in a bit of the rigging as well, using the tip of my brush. I'm not worried about it being sort of too thick or too wide. Um, I'm just trying to get the keep the movement, the freshness and the life in this sketch. Nice, quick, confident brush strokes. I can bring out a little bit more detail of the rigging and with a fine light liner later on. But for now, I just want to create this sort of sense of life and movement. Again, don't worry if you get any wobbles, you can just sort of um, smudge it out. Remember, these sort of um, slightly wobbly lines and will actually all help to keep this, this sketch fresh. We're doing a sketch, not a finished painting. Now this is, um, I've really added a lot more water to my blue and putting some shadow into the sail itself. Just want that very pale tone just to take away from the white of the paper everywhere. And now I've dipped into a mixture of my blue and my um, burnt umber and I'm putting in a couple of people just sort of at the front of the boat leaning into it as it bounces and makes its way through those waves. A little bit of a darker edge underneath there. There's not much more that needs to be done now. I think we're nearly there. Just a few little details and additions to the water and I think just a, you know just a little bit more um, to, done to the rigging at the end with a fine liner. But first, uh, using a flat brush, I'm going to um, add the final value to the water to really make the sail, the sky and everything else pop. Um, 
this really nice dark with lots of indigo um, right across the horizon line, but still being careful to leave my sea spray and my sort of sky blue colour in the water um, for that sense of movement. So that really does help to really give us the shape of the boat by negatively painting the dark into the water. And now dropping in some sea spray effects using my fan brush and some white gouache. Um, there's hardly any water mixed to it, just enough to get it to flow, but keeping it nice and, and thick. Not going to overdo that too much, just enough um, to enhance the freshness. And just a dab of vermilion, because I can see a little orange, um, some sort of a, a fixture in the photograph. So I'm just going to dab a couple of bits of vermilion here and there because I think those tiny pops of colour just really bring the sketch together. This is a 0.3 Pigma Micron fine liner and just going to put a bit of the rigging in, just some extra lines and marks across the sail, a little bit of something and nothing here and there and I can go back in as well with a, a white jelly roll gel pen too and just pull across some lighter rigging lines here and there. Don't need too much, it's just these sketchy lines that all sort of help to add movement and life to the sketch. And I think I'm pretty much happy with that. So it's now time to remove the washi tape, peeling it away from the paper because this, this sort of, um, cartridge paper will often tear when you remove the tape so just pull it away from the painting then you won't get any tears in your painting and here's the finished painting um, I think I may just make a couple of minor adjustments just darken up in a few sort of well chosen spots here and there in the water just get those values right which again is the thing that's really helping to um, push out the boat, add movement to it and to really enhance the soft edges around the boat where there's sea spray which again enhances the movement. Then back to my fine liner again just to add a few little darks underneath the sail. A couple of maybe sort of enhance some of those those lines. Try not to overdo it, but just a few little tiny scribbly marks, maybe a curved, um, a curved rope. And that's the finished sketch. Well, that's the finished sketch for day five. And I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the life, the energy. Um, and it's really important as you sketch, just not to worry about perfection, just to try and see if you can just capture something of the movement or the light or the shapes that you see in the pictures that you're trying to sketch. And remember, if you're just starting out with sketching, you can't afford to be too precious about it. You have to expect to make some bad sketches to start with or, or something that you're not happy with. But go straight in and sketch again and you will see an improvement very, very quickly if you're really enjoying the process. And it's quite simple. The more you practice, the better you'll get. So um, if you want to sketch along with me, either with these ideas here or by sketching your own ideas, then make sure you share them with me by using the hashtag um, Lois Davidson Art, which I shall put in the description below. Share them with me on Instagram um, and I shall be able to see them there. And if you're a member of um, Patreon, then you can share your sketches and your progress in the private Facebook group for members only. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you'll come back tomorrow for day six. And I've got no idea what I'm going to be sketching, but I'm sure it'll be something interesting.
So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And thank you so much to our wonderful Patreons who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy sketching. Bye.